Hi, this is Paul Chapeau again, and I'm here with Brian Brown from the National Organization of Marriage. Good afternoon, Brian. Thanks for having me. Well, we've got a couple of questions for you. We've listened to your speech, and uh, the first question that comes to mind is, of course, the citizens of Georgia have already enshrined uh, a constitutional amendment here in Georgia. So what was the purpose of visiting Georgia? What did you hope to uh, gain by coming here? Well, we were expected a ruling two months ago in the uh, Perry v. Schwarzenegger case in California. And so the main purpose of the tour was to not only visit places that have upcoming marriage amendment votes, but places that overwhelmingly passed uh, defining marriage as the union of a man and a woman in their constitution. So this, uh, Atlanta was picked very early on because of the overwhelming numbers in Georgia uh, for the marriage amendment. And the fact is that although this isn't necessarily being widely re reported, it should be, uh, it, the Perry decision doesn't just affect California. It affects Georgia. It affects the entire country if it's upheld on appeal. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that we that stood out for us today was, of course, the invoking of the King legacy. And you are standing in Atlanta, Georgia, home of Martin Luther King. So, of course, there's a lot of sentiment here about the King legacy. Um, are you aware that Coretta Scott King herself was a an advocate for the LGBT community? I am aware that she supported same-sex marriage. Okay. Okay. And would you uh, say it's fair to? Uh, summarize the entire King legacy as being supportive of uh, your movement? Uh, well, I would say that there are different interpretations of the King le legacy, but clearly many of the, uh, the King grandchildren, and obviously Dr. Alveda King, who was here, understands that part of what Dr. King was doing, a major part, was uh, protecting the rights of citizens to vote. Uh, this decision in California basically deprives folks of their 14th Amendment right to vote, uh, basically says that the judiciary trumps the people's ability to vote. But also, what I spoke about today was Dr. King clearly was inspired by his faith to stand up for justice. And that's what we are doing here today. We, we are doing the same thing. And when you have the African-American community, uh, even though there, is, there are some in the African-American community, obviously you mentioned Coretta Scott King, Julian Bond, that support redefining marriage, the overwhelming majority of African-Americans in state after state support marriage as the union of a man and a woman. And part of the reason for that is because of their strong faith and unwillingness to be told that our faith must be kept separate and out of the public square. So, uh, you know, I, I see Dr. King's legacy as a profound... Uh, historic and beautiful attempt to bring the truth, uh, the truth of human dignity into the public square. I don't accept the false analogy of uh, the civil rights movement with the movement uh, to redefine marriage. I think that's absolutely false. Uh, rules against interracial marriage were about keeping the races apart. Marriage is that great social good that brings the sexes together. Well, now let me follow up on that question because uh, a lot of what we've heard today, of course, is, and from your organization throughout this tour, is you have the belief or hold the belief that citizens have the right to vote on another citizen's civil rights. Do you think it's fair to say that Martin Luther King would have supported Georgians voting on racial equality? Well, that's a, that's a logical syllogism right there. It's, uh, it's not true. Uh, we don't accept that there is a civil right to redefine marriage. If we did, we'd be supporting it. There is no civil right to redefine marriage, just as there's no civil right to group marriage or any other attempt to redefine marriage. M marriage is a pre-political institution. The state does not create marriage. The state uh, recognizes it. Hasn't the Supreme Court, though, upheld time and time again that marriage itself is a fundamental civil right? Yes, but all of the courts that did that would reject any idea that this means that same-sex couples can marry. When you say marriage is a civil right, you're saying marriage as defined as the union of a man and a woman is a civil right. And even, even though it is a civil right, obviously there are still limits. There are age limits. Uh, there are limits to number. Uh, the reason for that is because the binary structure of marriage is based upon the fact that men and women uh, come together in marriage. It takes one man and one woman to make a marriage. Well, let me ask uh, one final question. The, the issue that was raised today about marriage and the fact that uh, Nam uh, believes that gay marriage, uh, same-sex marriage rather, specifically is bad for children, 
But if we look at statistics and we look at examples like the state of Massachusetts, um, for example, after seven years of gay marriage in that state, the divorce rate has fallen. And studies continue to show that there is no real difference to children's uh, ability to, uh, or same-sex couples, to provide a nurturing home to their children. How do you respond to that? Study after study has shown, and these are studies that have long longitudinal data to go from. We don't have long longitudinal data on same-sex parenting. It's a relatively new phenomenon. And there's, uh, we don't have the same cohort that we do to study that we do with uh, for marriage. But every study we have on marriage shows that marriage is the ideal institution for children. Is it always, uh, it, 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 sometimes is it not... Um, an option, yes. Yeah. Through no fault of their own, you have uh, single motherhood, you have other issues, but same-sex marriage is quite different. It's the state creating an institution which by its very nature will rob children of ever having the chance to have both a mom and a dad. I think that's a profound social experiment on our children and it's completely unacceptable. There, there was a good turnout today, yeah. and there's been a lot of sentiment about your tour, this summer tour. Um, it, it must be costing a lot of money to go state by state. Who's funding NOMS uh, this summer of, of, of marriage tour? for you? Well, we have 35,000 donors, and I can't say that the gay press has always been um, accurate in trying to report our numbers. The fact is that we had uh, nearly 200 people in many of the stops. We had about 250 at other stops, and it was a little hilarious to get emails from people saying we had 50 people <laughs> when we had 200. But apart from the numbers, I mean, I spoke about this today. Uh, what we're doing is creating uh, an, an activist base of folks that are willing to come out and come to events like this. Many of our supporters are people that are not used to protesting or rallying. I mean, it's a totally different thing. On your side, you guys are used to it. Would you agree with me or not? You're more used to doing this. We're not as used I, to doing I'm this. I'm not sure I would agree with okay. that. Okay. <laughs> but I would say that uh, one of the things that stands out, uh, especially for a lot of folks who have expressed this opinion today, and that is we hear a lot about activist judges. We do have three equal co-branches of government in the, uh, that our founding fathers laid down. Uh, the judicial branch, uh, as laid out by the founding fathers, their role in our democracy is, is to basically interpret law. Would you disagree with that statement? No, but I think you're going to have to, you know, forgive me for laughing when you say what Judge Walker did was interpret the law. Judge Walker had no precedent to base uh, his, his um, decision upon. There were no precedents. The federal government has never said what Judge Walker just said. So to say that somehow he interpreted the law, he made the law up out of thin air. And even people that support your position uh, are very leery about this decision. It was the broadest decision possible. When you're saying that on both due process and equal protection grounds, uh, folks that stood up and uh, voted to protect marriage were somehow uh, bigoted and depriving people of their rights, you're saying that the majority of Americans are bigots. I don't really think the U.S. Supreme Court is going to accept Walker's argument. I think it will be overturned. But again, I, I really do think that uh, the, the the decision has lit a fire under our supporters, and given how many states we've had marriage amendments, I think we can pass a U.S. constitutional amendment defining marriage as the union of a man and a woman. Well, if we have marriage in the state of Massachusetts, in the state of Iowa, and several others at this point, then you disagree that the full faith and credit clause of our Constitution doesn't guarantee that every other state in, the const uh, in these United States should recognize those gay marriages that are uh, being performed in Massachusetts and, and like the state of Iowa? Of course I do. The full faith and credit clause does no such thing. Uh, the, the states that you mentioned, Iowa and Massachusetts, had same-sex marriage foisted upon them by the courts. Uh, that's one important point. The people didn't vote for it. It was, it was forced on them in the same way Judge Walker wants to force same-sex marriage on the entire country. But uh, there, there have been differences in marriage laws from state to state, but uh, never have you had a state do what... Uh, Massachusetts and Iowa has done, which is fundamentally redefine marriage. And because of the Defense of Marriage Act, clearly full faith and credit uh, clause doesn't, uh, doesn't pertain here. I don't think it would otherwise, but the Defense of Marriage Act signed into law by Bill Clinton and an overwhelming bipartisan majority states clearly that marriage in the United States is the union of a man and a woman. You can't force a state uh, to recognize um, uh, same-sex marriage from another state. Well, Brian, thank you for your time this afternoon. This is Paul Chapeau reporting from the Georgia State Capitol.